hello guys we will see multi threading in java in this particular video now first of all what is multi threading there are terms like multitasking is there and multi threading is there multitasking means running multiple applications onto the processor at the same time for example you can open notepad and at the same time you can open some other application which is say winamp uh, you are listening to the songs so both the things can be run simultaneously is multitasking multi threading is similar concept but the only difference is the multi threading happens within the same application so multi threading means multiple sub task running under the same task and they are running parallel to each other the example is suppose i am opening word file and i i, I type some paragraph then when i type the paragraph one thread is going on to the background or one thread is running on to the background which is checking for spellings so spell check occurs and wherever mistake is there it it, it gives you indication so that is nothing but multi threading then on to the next slide you can see the different stages of life cycle of a thread now when i create a thread using constructor then the first stage is new stage so it is a newly born thread now after i start that thread then it it goes to the runnable stage runnable means a thread which is about to run running the thread means executing the run method which is implementing implemented inside the thread class so runnable is about to run after that run method execution starts and thread becomes running thread now running thread can go into two of these stages either it can go into the waiting state or it can go into the dead state so if the time stamp for particular thread is over which is allocated by the processor then it will go to the waiting state and the processor is taken over by the other threads or if the task of the thread is complete then it will go to the dead state so same states or same stages are explained in this slide new state is there runnable state waiting state timed waiting state is there timed waiting means particular thread is waiting to occur some event and terminated state is there which is dead state so the next slide is regarding the priority of the threads now operating system will schedule the threads for execution depending on their priority so in java priority of the thread varies between 1 to 10 10 means highest priority 1 is lowest priority so there are three priority constants constants like mean priority max priority mean priority is 1 max priority is 10 and average priority which is also called as norm priority is 5 so generally when the thread is created it by default it gets normal priority which is 5 now the higher priority threads runs before the lower priority threads but it is not mandatory so you cannot guarantee that the the higher priority thread will always run before the lower priority thread again that is platform dependent here there are some methods of thread class which are given one is start method start method is used to start the thread run method run method is nothing but the the task of the thread which the thread is actually executing the code for that thread is inside the run method set name is to set the name of the thread set priority is to set the priority which is between 1 to 10 so the other methods are set demon method is there set demon takes boolean argument true or false join method is there join method will make other threads to stop its execution till the current thread execution is complete then interrupt is there interrupt will start the threads which are blocked for some reasons is alive will tell you the thread which is currently running after that yield method is there sleep method is there sleep method is taking milliseconds as the argument so it will make particular thread 
to stop its execution for those many milliseconds. Hold the lock is there and current thread is there. Current thread will return the reference of currently executing thread. Dump stack method is there. So on to the next slide. One example is given. In this example, they have implemented one class which is display message class implementing the runnable interface. Now when I implement multi-threading, there are two ways in which I can implement that. One is by implementing the runnable interface and other is by extending the thread class. So thread class itself implements the runnable interface. So anyways, we are implementing the runnable only directly or indirectly. But syntactically, there are two things. Either you can implement runnable or you can, implement, uh, you can extend the thread class. So here, runnable is implemented in display message class. There is one message attribute which is set into the parameterized constructor. Run method is implemented which is printing that message infinite number of times. After that, another class is there. Now when I implement this class, it is extended from the thread class. Parameterized constructor is there, run method is there, run method is generating random numbers and it is printing those random numbers till I do not get the value which is equal to the value which is passed from the main method. Now on to the next slide, main method is there inside which I am creating few objects. So I have created objects thread1 and thread2 and they are created from the references of display message class and thread3, thread4 objects are there which are created from the references of guess number class. So on these objects, I am calling the methods in this main method and I will observe the output for that. So let me implement the whole code practically. This is demonstration for multi-threading in Java. There is one class which is display message class implementing the runnable interface. Run method is overridden which is printing some message infinite number of times which is initialized in the constructor. Now in main method I am creating two objects, one is thread1 object, other is thread2 object. Thread1 object is created from hello reference which is nothing but hello string and thread2 object is created from by reference which is a goodbye string. I am calling functions like set daemon, set name, set priority. So let me run the code first. So it has printed hello. It did not print goodbye. So thread2 did not have any chance to run since its priority is minimum priority. So thread1 is executing. Let me comment this line and let me check now. Still it did not run. Suppose I comment out this set daemon and now I run. Now both threads are executing simultaneously. Sometimes it is printing hello and sometimes it is printing bye. But this program will not terminate automatically. You have to click here because thread is executing for infinite time. So set daemon will kiss the thread after a particular time. Then there is one more demonstration. Suppose there is one class which is guess and number which is extending the thread interface now. Previously it was implementing runnable interface. Now this is done by extending the thread class. Run method is overridden where one random number is generated and that random number is printed till it do not gets equal to the number which is passed from method main. So from method main I am passing some number. So here the thread class method methods used are 
one is join method is there then get name method is there so first I will run the program so both the threads has executed now you will see that thread 1 is not executed before thread 0 ends its execution so this is because of join method Since this join method will keep other thread waiting for its execution to complete if I comment it out and if I run now now you can see that thread 0 is also executing and thread 1 is also executing and thread 1 is not dependent on the execution of thread 1 thread 0 so this is regarding multi-threading examples in Java